At least I don't have an irrational fear of birds like the person I'm passing the phone to. First of all, I'm not afraid of birds. I'm just aware of them. And even if I was, I'm not talking about the backyard Tweety wake you up at 5 a.m. birds. I'm talking about this Jurassic bull with feathers. Regular show was not kidding. This velociraptor that time forgot can easily one shot you with one swipe of his claws. Yes, I said claws. If you're not already, here's every reason you should be afraid of them. They can run at 31 miles per hour, meaning they could chain snatch Usain Bolt. They can jump seven feet straight in the air, meaning this bush turkey could clear a shack. And they swim, meaning you couldn't felt your way out of this one. Female cassowary is actually bigger than the males, and the biggest ones could grow to six and a half feet tall. This guy is six and a half feet tall. They have the sharpest claws of any rat and that second nail is basically a dagger that can disembowel both people and dogs. And by can, I mean they have. They've done it. And the bastards kick. One man was taking pictures of one when the murder turkey proceeded to charge and knock him off a cliff. Cassowaries are naturally shy, and 95% of the time they'd rather run away. It's just that 5% is how someone ends up on CNN. There's three types of cassowaries, and I approve of exactly none of them. And on everything, I'd forgive all of that if they didn't sound like this. <laughs> I don't even have a fear of birds, I just have a fear of getting my throat split open by an overgrown homicidal jungle goose that sounds like a Toyota on life support and indigestion. At the end of the day, when it comes to animals, I only have one rule. If Steve don't f with them, what makes you think I will? Yeah, that's a basking shark. They're highly dangerous menaces to society if you're zooplankton because that's all they eat. Not only are they harmless to us, a lot of them will curiously approach divers in boats. The only messed up thing is if they don't look like they're in a perpetual state of agony with their mouth, they look almost identical to tiger sharks on steroids. But unlike tiger sharks, baskies have tiny teeth that never get bigger than half an inch, meaning this almost 30 foot whale guppy is a pacifist. They also might be the ocean's biggest troll. Cause when this corpse was found off the coast of New Zealand in 1977, people thought it was either a dead plesiosaur or a sea serpent. An idea that either of those could be in the ocean made people collectively sh enough bricks to build a city. But really, it was just a basking shark that hit its expiration date. The only dangerous thing about them is that they allegedly taste disgusting. Gordon Ramsay vomited after trying fermented basking shark, and Anthony Bourdain called it the worst thing to ever assault his tongue. But the shark never asked to be eaten, so I'm not holding it against them. Also, this is what a baby baskie looks like. Moral of this video, they're perfectly harmless, and we stand shark pawed in these parts. You probably already know that Australia lost a war to this bird, but here's how this discount ostrich was able to dub an entire country. Number one, they're basically bulletproof. Their organs actually make up a small part of their body, which is why this rehab big bird was able to eat bullets like 50 to the point where it took literally 10 rounds just to take out one of these feathery tanks number two emus are ridiculously disrespectfully unnaturally athletic not only can this Australian bush turkey sprint at 35 miles per hour, they can change directions like messy, meaning they were out here ankle breaking men on trucks that couldn't keep up. They can jump seven feet in the air, and for an overgrown sand chicken, they've been known to climb fences. God was 100% laughing at us when he gave emus the green light. Number three, they're way smarter than we thought. These emus had lookout groups, with every flock having a leader that would stand guard and warn the others if they saw soldiers approaching, meaning it was almost impossible to sneak up on them. They would also purposely split up and scatter just to make it more difficult. Eventually, they started to recognize the sound of the trucks that the soldiers were riding, and would even dip before they saw them. And and number four, there was just too many of them. Killing all of them would have put the economy in a pack. At one point, there were 986 confirmed emu kills, but it took 9,860 rounds to do it. You can laugh, but we would have lost one on Instagram asked me, what's the most dangerous animal that people don't talk nearly enough about? And this was the first image that popped in my head. Yeah, wild boar are a f***ing problem. The biggest ones can weigh up to 250 pounds with tusks that can put you in a newspaper. When they choose death penalty, they'll charge and impale their victims with those daggers they call teeth. Then they'll take a step back and if you're still moving, they'll rush you again. They'll keep doing this until you're either crippled or a wuss. And they usually aim for the thigh, so if they sever your femoral artery, it's curtains, my guy. Boars are the homicidal tendencies of hippos with the street smarts of raccoons. This steroid porky has learned to stay close to humans because our garbage is free food to them, which is why they'll easily take your soul over half a box of popcorn. And according to cave paintings, they've been on our ass since the Stone Age. But like everything else, this is our fault, because the more we move into their hood, the more they lose their natural fear of humans, and the more obituaries get co-signed by this shuffle demon, and once again, Florida goes to hell and brings the bar with it. They're an invasive species, and there's not 1,000, not 5,000, but half a million of these rogue pigs in the Sunshine State, to the point where they might start voting in the next election. But don't feel too bad, Texas has about 2 million of them. You can find them in about 30 states. God gave them life, and they make it everyone's problem. By the time the office asked which bear is the best bear, but I noticed they never did the same with cats, so I'm here to tell you. Jaguar is the best cat. You'd swear their avatar the way they body every element. They can run you down at 45 miles per hour, climb trees, and because nature loves stacking a deck, the bastards can swim, and they're pretty good at it. Some were even caught phelpsing across the Panama Canal, meaning this steroid with whiskers can outrun, outclimb, and outswim you, and if one comes at you, you're 50 shades of... Jaguars are the third most brawl big cats behind lions and tigers. But with a bite force of 1,500 pounds per square inch, they have by far the most disrespectful bite of any cat. Not only that, but jaguars do something no other cat does. That's canceling their victim by going for the head instead of the neck. To do rag, jaguars can skull cap caiman. The name jaguar means he who kills with one leap, which is fair because they do be one-shotting. On top of all that, they have some of the biggest eyes of any predator, meaning not only can they see underwater, God gave them night vision and told the rest of the jungle to deal with it. Jaguars are so metal that ancient metal warriors used to feed them the hearts of their slaughtered enemies as respect. They can also evict turtles with their teeth. 
call for the king of the jungle and the jaguar will pick up the phone. Absolutely right, we talked about the best bear and the best cat, so obviously we gotta talk about the best dog. African wild dogs are a cell block de menace to society. Even though they share a zip code with lions, hyenas, and crocodiles, this homicide pup has one of the most disrespectful KD ratios of any African animal. These dogs have a kill percentage of 80%, meaning every time they go out to hunt, there's an 8 out of 10 chance somebody's life subscription's getting cancelled. They're about the same size as the average pet dog, but there's one terrifying fact about them. They never get tired. The African Cujo can run you down at 37 miles per hour for 3 miles straight, and there can be up to 20 of them on your ass. Imagine being chased by 20 of something that has the endurance of a Duracell. But the real nightmare is if, actually, when they catch you. Unlike lions and leopards that'll put you out of your misery first, wild dogs eat you alive while you sit there and wait for an Uber to the afterlife. Your entire way of life can come down to a sneeze, since wild dogs vote on whether or not to go out to hunt by sneezing. On a wholesome note, they do let the puppies eat first, since their pack structure is based on helping out the weakest members instead of letting the strongest ones take their pick, like lions. Because of this, their pack structure is way more efficient and way deadlier than wolves. They're so good at what they do that hyenas will try to steal from them and lions will try to murk them on sight because they see them as such a threat. I don't even blame them because imagine being chased by something that no matter how hard or long you run, every time you turn back, it's there waiting to run your pockets. Basically the IRS but with teeth and a tail. Hey crazy. Hi. You are so happy today. Yes you are. Oh you're a good girl. Bob Horn's been having fun. That is a binturong, also known as a bear cat, even though it's not a bear or a cat. It's a vivera, and the best way to describe them are as musty smelling cats that aren't really cats. As a vivera, they're related to civets and genus, which to be fair, you probably never heard of before, but they're also part of the Feliform suborder, which also makes them somewhat related to hyenas, fusa, and mongoose like meerkats, which you definitely have heard of before. And if you smell a movie theater, you're probably smelling them because their pee smells exactly like popcorn. And just like their distant relative, the hyena, female bear cats have a pseudo penis, and I have no idea why. This rehab raccoon is found all over Asia, and as a nocturnal introvert, they spend most of the day hiding and sleeping in trees. They use those long prehensile tails to help climb trees and has mood rings to communicate to others how they feel, and shaking it means they're happy. They also make a lot of random sounds and they've been known to chuckle as a sign of comfort. Even though they identify as members of the carnivore group, they also eat fruits and figs and it turns out bintongs in captivity really love plantains. Go figure. Uh, there's no fact here, just a baby binti. Female bintis have a superpower, which is they can delay their own pregnancy and give birth whenever they feel like it, thanks to embryonic diapause. You wish that was you, don't you? They're shy, awkward, plantain-loving introverts that spend most of their time eating and sleeping, aka your new spirit animal. I can't speak for all of you, but I stand this alcoholic otter. Thing is, panthers don't actually exist. I mean, not in the way you think they do. Because the word panther doesn't refer to one animal. The word panther actually refers to the panther genus, which is made up of lions, tigers, jaguars, leopards, and snow leopards. And you're probably thinking, what about black panthers? Well, that's literally what they are. They're black panthers. We use that to describe a member of the panther genus that has a mutation that turns it black, and this mutation happens to jaguars and leopards. But because the gene that causes this mutation is dominant in jaguars and recessive in leopards, most black panthers are actually melanated jaguars. But technically, if a lion or a tiger had to go to a funeral and was dressed in all black, we'd call them a black panther too. Now, I'm probably going to get a lot of comments that think this guy right here is a panther, but he actually isn't. Mountain lions are actually more related to smaller cats like your pet than they are to lions, tigers, and leopards. And in case somebody brings up the Florida panther, that's really just a cougar that got misnamed. Moral of this video, panthers are like Santa and black men that cheat. They simply do not exist. Here are some things you can do in Australia that you simply can't do anywhere else. Number one, you can meet Pikachu. This is a yellow brush tailed possum. They're one of the most widespread marsupials in Australia, so widespread that sometimes they break into people's homes. And getting Kool-Aid man by a living Pokemon is definitely something you need in your life. Number two, you can watch a blue penguin parade. The blue penguin is the smallest of its kind, and if you're on Phillip Island at the right time, you can watch hordes of them emerge from the sea and waddle single file like children towards their nesting sites. Like you can actually sit and watch them waddle past you. And if you can sit here and tell me this doesn't make you smile, either you sold your soul or you just weren't born with one to begin with. Number three, you can meet a patamelon. It's basically the kangaroo's smaller, less clouded cousin. And like roos and wallabies, they get to where they gotta go by hopping. They're just really cute about it. Number four, you can witness Aurora Australis, aka the Southern Lights. It's the result of a disturbance in the magnetosphere caused by solar wind, which causes particles to release color as they become ionized. In simple terms, it's nature on LSD. And number five, of course, you can meet the world's happiest animal. Technically found off the coast of Australia on islands like Rottnest, but it still counts. They smile to cool off, and they've lost their fear of humans. Which is why this exists. In Quokka, we trust. Listen here, I'm about to tell you five things you did not know about the octopus. Number one, you know how the man of war is basically a jellyfish on juice? That can have you looking like you got 50 shaded? Well, the octopus will strap up by arming themselves with the tentacles of the man of war and swing them at any predator or op that tries to press them. Basically using the disembodied venom arms the same way a corner store junkie might use a broken beer bottle as a weapon. Number two, they have post-nut clarity so bad it literally kills them. After the heat puss hits for the first time, he pretty much goes into the octopus version of dementia. Symptoms include not eating, body lesions, uncoordinated movements, and the skin around his eyes retracting. This is called senescence, and it means he falls apart from the inside until either a predator puts him out of his misery or he starves to death. Our boy Squidward has two choices in life. He can either live a virgin or die a man. Number three, octopus will throw hands at fish right in the dome piece, and with eight arms, there's plenty of hands to go around. 
We used to think they did this as a defensive response, but now it's believed they do it purely out of spite. Number four, octopus will team up with other fish while hunting, and they often choose groupers as partners. They work together and reap the benefits. Sometimes the octopus will switch up enticing the fish right in the head, but now we believe they do it to keep the fish honest. It's not confirmed, but it's believed that they smack around their hunting partners to keep them in line and keep them from cheating them out of food. Who knows, maybe the octopus got screwed over by his last fish friend and works through his trauma by uppercutting his current partner. And number five, octopus are members of a group called cephalopod, which is also part of a group called gastropods, which includes snails and slugs. Meaning Squidward and Gary are actually related, and yeah, that boy Squidward is actually an octopus. Man's got misspecied by his own moms. You hate to see it. In honor of Pride Month, here are some animals that are gay as hell, and that's okay. Koalas are walking plush toys and probably have the same IQ as one, which is why they don't understand a lot of things, including consent. Since male koala flirting is violent and aggressive, sometimes the females will reject the males and then hook up with each other in lesbian sessions that can have up to five members. According to some studies, for every male-female koala couple, there are three lesbian liaisons also happening, and in some zoos, females will only mate with other females immediately after rejecting another male, and honestly, I respect that. Some penguins will form same-sex couples and then adopt a baby to raise as their own. And by adopt, I mean they steal an egg from a more traditional penguin pairing. Because males and females are difficult to tell apart, there's probably way more gay penguin couples in the wild, we just really notice it in captivity. As for the kidnapping, maybe if the adoption process for gay couples wasn't such an unnecessary hassle, then maybe they wouldn't have to choose abduct over adopt. Number three are bonobos. Honestly, they're not even gay or straight, they're just whatever they wake up feeling like. Bonobos use handshakes just like us, but instead of hands, they use the parts they pee with because that's how they create and reinforce social bonds. Bonobos are cansexual, meaning anything can get it. Doesn't matter what gender because they don't go off boy or girl, they go strictly off vibes. Even more animals that are gay, and the last one just might surprise you. Male lines will form tight bonds that start with effects and nuzzling and caressing and escalates all the way to the love child of Lion King and Brokeback Mountain. Zoologists believe 8% of male mountings occur with another male. And apparently the guys treat other guys better because where male and female matings are violent and often end in fights, male lions are more gentle and tender with each other. Now technically, they're not gay, but it sure as hell ain't straight. It's believed that one out of every five swan couples are gay, and like most swan pairings, they mate for life. Like till death do us part type stuff. Researchers have found that one of the males will mate with a female only to chase her off when she lays an egg just so he and his partner can raise it instead. And they're pretty good at it because gay swan couples are better parents because 80% of same gender pairings will raise young successfully where straight couples are about less than 50. Still don't f*** with birds, but I know wholesome when I see it. Most male walruses are bisexual and actually depends on the season. During breeding season, they keep it traditional by pursuing females. Outside of breeding season, walrus life quickly turns into blubberback mountain. And I know I made that joke already, but hell if I pass it up. But they don't just hook up, the males will also embrace each other and sleep close together. Fun fact, for a lot of walruses, until they reach maturity, which is basically their version of puberty, every sexual encounter they have is with another male. Meaning a majority of male walrus first times are with another guy walrus. If we're the boys, the more you know.